They were here on the floor of Dreamforce in the Moscone Center, the West Hall. And we always at Inside Sales like to have the best opportunity to influence and teach and share great content. So Joanne Black is one of the experts in this field. Her title is Harnessing the Power of Referrals to Pack Your Pipeline. So she already spoke with us earlier, and we loved it. I took lots of great notes. So please sit back and, and uh, get your notepad out. You're going to love this content. Uh, we'll turn the time over to Joanne. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. So you're right. Actually, my first book was No More Cold Calling, and my publisher said I'm America's leading authority on referral selling. So I'm taking that. <laughs> I figured, okay, that's good. I can take that. Uh, and so that's where that came from. And it's about the power of referrals. That's what we're going to talk about. And I'm going to give you some really good tips for things that you can do. Now, I need to preface this by saying that my approach is a bit contrarian. That I believe if you follow the path everybody else follows, you're going to look like everybody else. And we don't differentiate ourselves at all. And so during our few minutes together, I want everybody to keep an open mind and take in information that just might help so you can leave with something you can do that's different so you're not leaving money on the table. So can we do that? Keep an open mind? Yes, good. <laughs> and so the first concept I'd like to share with you is there's no such thing as a warm call. Now, I hear this from salespeople all the time. They'll say, oh, Joanne, I'm not cold calling. I'm making a warm call. I say, well, what does that mean? Well, they'll say, well, I have a name. Well, no, that doesn't play in my book. You can't just have a name. We do that. You know, we have lists. We can go on social media. We find people. But if we call, if we send an email, if we reach out through social media, and we just have a name, it's ice cold. So my definition of a cold call or a cold outreach is you reach out to someone who doesn't know you and doesn't expect your call or your outreach. They might be surprised. They might say, hey, who are you? <laughs> Ken might say, oh, Mike referred me. Well, might not believe that. It's very different. So a call or an outreach in my book, it's either cold or it's hot. And hot means you have an introduction. That is the definition of a referral. Without an introduction, your outreach is ice cold. And what's happening today is this link between referral selling and social selling. And you see a lot of people who are not behaving properly on social. They forget that we need to put the social back in social selling. That if we want to get a referral, we need to build a relationship. And when we're in person, we build a relationship. We shake hands, we hug, we smile, we have a conversation, right? We need to do the same thing online and not just sit there and type and push buttons because that doesn't work. One of the things I tell people, never, ever, ever, underline 15 times do, is to ask for a referral online. And people do that. LinkedIn gives us the option to do that. People have told me when they get those kind of requests, they're really pissed off. <laughs> because they, is, they we're just assuming that, of course, they'll introduce us. We need to have the conversation. We need to communicate to our referral source why we want the introduction, what is the business reason for the introduction. And most of the time, we're not doing that. And also, if you're on LinkedIn, you don't know if they know the person or not. I mean, it used to be people just accepted every LinkedIn invitation. That's not happening so much anymore, but it used to. In fact, I was introduced to someone, and his business partner said, oh, Jim accepts every LinkedIn invitation. He, he probably won't know who you want to meet. And I called him. We scheduled a phone call, and he said, I have no idea who that person is. But then he said, Tell me, Joanne, who you want to meet and why. We had the conversation, and he introduced me to someone else. You see, that never would have happened had we not had the conversation. And then it's my opportunity 
to ask him or whoever my referral source is, what's new with you? And we all have something new every hour of the day, every, every different day, don't we? Don't we have something new every day? We certainly do here. So you may have something you were doing yesterday and something totally new today. I need to find out. And then my next, I always ask, how may I help you? Sometimes it's just, oh, you know what? What's that article that so-and-so wrote? Or you tweeted about this. It, it could be they want a connection. It's not always a client. But there's some way I can help. A lot of people have come to me and they want to know about writing a book. So we have that conversation. We can help in a lot of different ways. And it's not always a referral to a client. But it's always, always, always an introduction and always a personal phone call, not online. Because we, what do we want? Do we want a name or do we want an introduction? This is your turn to answer. <laughs> what do we want? A live introduction. That's it. That is a referral because without that, your outreach is ice cold. Now I'm going to ask you, I'm, I'm just assuming here, which is dangerous, that you like to get referrals. So I'd like you to think of a time when you were introduced to someone that you wanted to meet. You got a direct introduction to that person. Do you like that when that happens? Okay, tell me why. Tell me why. Why do you like that? Mike, why do you like that? Yes, you yes, you feel good, legitimacy, like there's that trust already there, isn't there? Absolutely. Why else do you like to get referrals? You have an idea? No? Okay. Ken, what about you? Yes, oh, that's nice. I'm going to quote that. We started a level of a relationship without having to build a relationship. Somebody, in fact, said to me, it's like you missed that dreaded first date. <laughs> For those of us who remember that, we do. And so we have that trust. We have that credibility. They know about us already. A lot of times we don't have competition. Or if we do, we have the inside track. I have people tell me things all the time that, that nobody else is learning then what percent of the time when you've gotten that introduction does that prospect become a client? I want you to just think about it. Do you think in your experience, do you think it's around 30% of the time, 50% of the time, 70% of the time, 90 above? So how many of you think it's maybe 50% of the time that when you get that introduction, that prospect becomes a client? Just raise your hand if you think it's 50%. Okay, it's 70%. Oh, lots of hands going, no, not halfway, all the way up, thank you, 70%, 90%. All right, so we're right between 50 and 70%. Now, there is no other sales or marketing strategy that comes anywhere close to results like that. So we arrive pre-sold. We've got that credibility and trust. Our sales process shortens. That's what we want because we miss that dreaded first date. We ace out the competition. There's no hard costs. So to many businesses, this is really important. There's not a marketing cost to referrals. All right, sometimes you take somebody to coffee or breakfast, or as one of my clients likes to go to very expensive dinners. <laughs> but, and he says it works. But it's not this recurring large marketing expense. And then most people say it's well more than 50%. So here's what you need to run a referral business. You need a written referral sales plan, weekly written referral goals, way to track and measure referrals, and then accountability for results. Who has those four things? Yeah, sure can. So sales plan, I want to clear that up. I'm, I'm a salesperson. I've managed sales teams. That's all I've ever done my entire career. I don't like sales plans like this. Bullets, one page, you know, just net it out. 
and be clear what you want to do and then review it every week, every month. It's okay to change it and it's okay to blow past your goals, by the way. That's fine to do. So those are the things you need to say, yes, I am running a referral business. Who has that? So for those of you um, who are watching virtually, nobody raised a hand. And that's been the story since I founded my company in 1996. So on the one hand, it's the best business we ever have. On the other, we kind of do it. Yeah, we ask, but it's not a systematic, disciplined process with accountability for results. That's OK. So here's what it takes. First, you need to make referrals a priority. You know, you see that word is singular? We say very often, I have so many priorities, I don't know where to start. Well, we can only do one thing first. If referrals become your major outreach, then that's what we need to focus on. That's our priority. This does not negate, by the way, any other things we're doing around marketing or sales. You still have your CRM. You still have your marketing automation. You have all your lead gen. Everything else that's going on, you keep. But referrals then become the outbound that as salespeople, we are responsible for generating our own qualified leads. That's my job. Why else would I be in sales? Not to just take phone calls, because we see what happens when we're order takers. What happened in the last two crashes we had this century so far? Okay, People um, lost their jobs, lots of them. Our job is to create those qualified prospects. And referrals get integrated into your sales process. So referrals aren't something we do outside of the way we work. They become the way we work. That's the only way I work is through referral introductions. I'm out there continually asking, I'm networking, I'm meeting people, I'm finding out how I can help them. In the last 10 days, I have received amazing referrals. I asked one client and she gave me three, by the way. I asked someone else who I, who I knew, I'm going to say 25 years ago and we've reconnected. And he said, how can I help you? Look at my LinkedIn profile and who do you want to meet? We've had discussions. And now he's asked me a question. I can help him on some technology, which I'm going to do on Thursday. And then I get an email from someone I worked with in the late 80s. And she introduced me to someone that I should know. I never even asked. It just came through because I have a really strong brand. But she said, both of you are salespeople. You need to know each other. But it's because I'm in that space. And by the way, this is not just a California thing. It's not woo-woo. When, when we put that message out to the world, it comes back to us. But we're also very proactive about asking. People know why they should introduce us, what the business impact is. And we need metrics around referrals. Some people think referrals, oh, they're like, yeah, they're nice to have. They're squishy, but I can't measure them. You bet you can measure them. But there's a lot of intermediate metrics. Referrals can take a while because you might ask, then they introduce you, and maybe somebody's on vacation, it's not the right time. You know, who knows what's happening in their lives? We need to measure the number of people we ask every single week. That's number one. If we don't ask, we don't get. We need to measure the number of referrals we receive, the number of referral meetings we schedule the number of referral meetings we conduct, and then we measure the conversion. We can also measure, are those deals larger? Did they take a shorter time? I mean, I, sometimes I'll have calls that'll be out two months. Doesn't matter, I don't have a lot of things to do in the meantime. That's, what, that's the power, it's about how we use our time. What'd I do? I pushed something wrong. OK, thank you, Ken. We need to build skills. So it is, um, referral selling is a behavior change. It doesn't just happen. 
We can't just tell people you go and ask. First of all, they ask in stupid ways, like, if you know anyone who would benefit from my services, please let them know, because we can check that off our list. You see, referrals are personal. And one of the biggest reasons we're not asking in the right way is, number one, we don't know the business reason. But the biggest thing is we're not comfortable. I learned this when I first started talking about referrals. People said, yeah, that's great, Joanne, but I'm not comfortable. And it turned out it didn't matter if it was men or women, whether they were 25 or 85. It's a human factor because the perception is I'm asking someone to help me. And that's not cool. That's kind of a sign of weakness. It feels pushy. It feels salesy. It feels in your face. I mean, all of these kinds of things are perceptions which are real. Well, now how do we get past that? We get past that because we build solid skills that people practice. Like anything else to get good at, you have to practice. And you have to be accountable because otherwise it doesn't happen. Sometimes I say, why do we even need a trainer at the gym? Right? All the equipment's there. Just go in and use it. Do we? We have a trainer. We need that reinforcement, that accountability, keeping us on track, and we need metrics. And that's the implementation, because unless we implement, unless we follow through, unless our sales leaders are coaching and holding people accountable, and not having conversations like, who are you going to ask this week, but having conversations about who are you going to ask this week, and let's talk about the conversations you're going to have with them. So we're reinforcing behaviors, not activities. It's a huge difference. So that's the question. Are you ready to commit to referral selling? Which means you're ready to have this part of your strategy. You're ready to look at the roles and responsibilities in your company. You're ready to set metrics. You're ready to build skills. And you're ready to implement. So, I can't see you guys out there who are virtual, but in this room, if you're ready, would you raise your hand high? And if you're not ready, don't raise your hand at all. Okay, so, yes, so we're not sure, are we? What's getting in the way? Why aren't we sure? What do you think? You need to hear more. Back there. Why don't you feel like you're ready? Back there on your phone, why don't you think you're ready? <laughs> we use technology, you know, it's great, but why? What, what's the feeling? Does it feel like a little weird? Yeah, Ken. What do I say? So in my business, um, the, the challenges that sales leaders face are, number one, they say to me, you know, our people aren't calling high enough. They're not getting meetings with decision makers. They also say our sales process is way too long and our conversion rate is too low. Conversion rate's too low. So I've got all these leads, and I had somebody say this to me this morning. You know, we get the inquiry, but from the inquiry to the qualified takes a ton of time. But if I'm a sales rep and it's my job to bring in qualified leads, then that's what I'm asking for. So I'm asking you for a referral, Ken. We have the discussion about what are the issues that you're facing. And we talk about that. We get, oh, it's like the airport. You know, we get that interference, isn't it? <laughs> We have 10 minutes. We could go on for an hour, but I'm going to keep talking. So I would, I would have a conversation with you about what would be the impact if you actually implemented a referral system in your company. And you would tell me what that would be. And you would recognize it. And then I would say to you, well, you know, my, I, and I'd share with you my ideal client. So my ideal client is a, a sales leader, someone who runs a sales team, 
or a CEO of a mid-sized or smaller company. I mainly work in technology, which I never thought I'd say, but software, because the tendency with software companies is to open the laptop and let me show you my demo. Right? Doesn't work. We're not having the conversation. I also have a background in banking. Work with consulting firms. I actually have my first CPA client. You will hear things like, my sales team is losing to the competition. My sales team isn't getting meetings. We need to grow our revenue. All kind of sales complaints. I say to people, if you hear sales complaints, call me because if I'm not the right person, I have a huge network and I will refer you. Then I'm going to ask you, once we have our discussion and we take the time to have it, who are one or two people you know that I should meet? Who are one or two people you know that you can introduce me to? So it's not this list, right? I don't want a list. I want to know where your relationships are because that's where we start, where you have the best relationships. And that's the commitment. And that becomes our process. In fact, the, the client who gave me three referrals was talking about writing some uh, lead gen collateral for her. And she says, yeah, we do that. We hire outside writers. And she says, um, but our site is technical. So we do all the technical stuff, and our people are IT. And, and she knew the answer. She said, well, do you want to do that? I said, no way. No way, that's not what I do. Just let me refer you to the person in our company that you should talk to. And that's how that happened. It's having a conversation. It's not selling, it's sharing information. Because the biggest, the, the biggest reason people do business with us is because they trust us. And we need to gain that trust and earn it. The reasonable goal is about the number of people to ask. <laughs> well, the minimum's one, <laughs> right? <laughs> because zero doesn't count. Uh, it, it, you know, it depends on the the type of business. Obviously, if it's a transactional sale, it's going to be way more. But um, the companies I deal with in my business is not that. So it's 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 a little more complex. So it could be it could be one a week. It could be five a week. But we need to remember it's important to look at all our relationships, our in-person ones as well. We can't forget that we need to show up at networking events. We need to continue to meet people, not just online, but in person, and continue to expand our network and find out how we can help others. That's the first thing. It helps. Yes, so the question is, um, I did that again. How do you follow up when uh, somebody's given you a referral? So I follow up lots. As human beings, we want to be thanked. A phone call, an email, thank you. So that was a terrific referral. When, when you, we give a referral, we want to know it's, it's the right referral because then we will make more. So a phone call, an email, always, always, always a handwritten personal note. I don't care if you have lousy handwriting. You write a personal note on your company note cards. And if you don't have company note cards, you need to get them. It's not expensive. But, but people want that. I get people calling me and thanking me for my thank you note. <laughs> I do. Now, the one thing, Ken, I don't believe in, some people have asked me that, is incenting people for referrals. You know, how much money are you going to give me? Come on. It, it's a reflection on me, my personal relationship. Now, what I have done for some people who have been particularly generous, I have sent them a small gift. By small, I mean less than $50. It could be uh, personalized note cards, personalized memos. It could be a donation to their favorite charity. At a time that's after the fact, it's not at the holiday, they don't expect it. 
there's the client who gave me three referrals. I'm taking her to lunch because, I mean, I think she's fun and we're going to have a great time. I, wanted to, I just want to do that because she complains all the time. It's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. She hasn't eaten. So I'm saying, I need to get you out of there. But that's, you know, that's after the fact. But always immediate. And then you don't need to tell your referral source, oh, you know, I did a million dollars with them. You're not sharing that information. You're letting them know it was a perfect referral. You talk to them, and here's why. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Why do you love Salesforce.com? Uh, <laughs> well, if you listen to the keynote this morning, so I live in San Francisco, in the Bay Area. And up until recently, people didn't know what Mark Benioff and Salesforce.com and the foundation did. Lynn and Mark Benioff have done amazing things, not only for this city, which you heard about today, but for the world. And he has, in, he has inspired other tech executives to do the same. It's not only the money he contributes. I mean, he gave a hundred million dollars right, to to the uh, UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital. That was a few years ago. Gave another hundred million dollars. All right, to the uh, to Oakland, to that to that hospital. He's given money to the San Francisco schools, but he gives it, in addition to money, the technology, and then the, um, the person power, right? To go out and work with kids, work with people, and help them. That's that, that philanthropic part of Salesforce.com to me is so remarkable, where he comes from in his heart and what he wants to do and what he's enabled to do. He and Lynn, they are amazing people. Thanks again. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. That was so great. I don't know if you've all realized the caliber of people we've had here today. These are world-class people. Some of the greatest thought leaders in the whole industry. Some of the greatest authors. So if you haven't, I would so recommend that you get out and you research some of these books that Joanne has written, they will change your selling career. Let's give her one more hand. Thank you.